Doc Face here. Well, today we've got a project inside of a project. Uh, at this point, about halfway through with the Blaupunk radio rebuild, and I really bumped my head quite hard on checking the capacitors and making sure that the new capacitors that are going in uh, are working. So I've acquired this Heathkit C3 capacitor checker. It's called a condenser checker because back in the day capacitors were called condensers. I'm going to rebuild this so I can test the capacitors so we can get the Blaupunk radio going. So this is just going to be a quick opening video. I really don't know what I've got. It was purchased at an estate sale. So let's just dive right in. First things first, I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Knob turns, but the dial doesn't go with it. Not quite sure what that's about. And the wire, I was looking through the instruction manual, and this looks to be at the original wire that uh, was part of the original kit. And to say that looks a little dodgy understates the word dodgy. I don't know if that will just pull out. Nope. So they've done something weird there. Yeah, that's in there good. We'll have to figure out what the story is on that. So let's just dive right in and open this bad boy up. feet on it, I'll bet you it's 100% original on the inside. probably don't come. Let me go Google this. Okay, I know there was a world that existed before the internet. I would never want to go back there. So, for those of you that are doing this at home, it's just prize out here. So, this whole back piece just comes off. It's all original. So you're seeing the old wax capacitors. And I've not plugged this in. I have no idea what condition it's in. But we'll go through it and see what she's got for us. So. Yep, but that baby's all original. So I'm going to uh, just write down the capacitors so I can pick them up and once we get those we'll do the process of troubleshooting and make sure everything's good and you all see that from your perspective right away. It's going to take me a couple hours or so, maybe a couple days. Nonetheless, stay tuned. Got a shopping list put together for all the capacitors. I'll put it down in the doodah below. Uh, now I'm going to check the resistors and see how they do and see if we've got to come up with any replacements. So according to the schematic, that should be 10 mega ohms of resistance. This kind of job is going to here should be, according to this, 1 meg. Close enough, 9.8 or 0.98, that's good. These guys over here, this one is supposed to be 10, 10 meg, or 10k, um, 9.4, good enough. All of these are supposed to be 22s. Let's see what we got there. There's actually a guy who's figured out, apparently this, this is the switch that chooses the voltage to test the uh, different voltage you can test the capacitor on. So he's gone to work in, figured out that these are terribly accurate, this uh, resistor divider doesn't, voltage divider doesn't do a terribly accurate job. They've actually calculated out what it needs to be. Um, I may replace these with those, or maybe not. So it's supposed to be 22, it's 24, yeah, probably okay. 
This one is supposed to be 22, 22.9. That's pretty close. And I'll go down here. Okay, 22, 23, close enough. 25, that's right in the ballpark. And 23.6. Okay, so those are all more or less good enough. Let's put this here. You now, better light on the subject there. That is one nasty looking resistor. It's coated in wax. Let's see what's good this for reading. All right, so 2K, or in schematic, supposed to be 2K. Uh, well, probably, but it's, but it's spot on. Okay, let's go for this one. And that one's supposed to be 200K, 201. I'm gonna call that one spot on again. How about this one here? 0.13, according to the drawing, it's supposed to be 90K. Not even freaking close. So, I'm gonna say that one needs to be replaced. So it's 50K on the side of it. The drawing says 90K. All right, well, whatever, it's good. Okay, I'm just stuck down here on the bottom. And this guy here's supposed to be 47K. Hmm, 42. Yeah, sorry, I'll talk about this down there. Um, okay, good. So up here. On screen at the same time. 47, uh, 470, that's 47k, 40, 70, 47k volts. Ooh, and that's, oh, that's way out. And, let's see, oh, wait, 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 I'm sorry. Um, that's supposed to be 47k. What did I say? I think I said 47k. Alright, that's, that's exactly where it's supposed to be. Alright, let's see, make sure we're clicking on the right thing before we start calling bad. Alright, so this one here, 47k, this guy here should be 1000. 1k, no, 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 that's close, right? And then this one should be 220. And, 21, yeah, pretty good actually. All right, so those are all the resistors. Okay, there she is all cleaned up. So as I mentioned earlier, this is just a side project, so I didn't videotape all the fixing this guy up, but the Sharpie's gone, fingernail polish is gone, the knob is attached, so it should be all good now. Um, I've run some tests on it as well, so much better, much cleaner. Now, going on the back side, made some changes back here. First off, uh, obviously we've got a new cord with a proper strain relief on it. Um, cleaned all the smooth up and so everything's all nice and clean. Uh, new capacitor uh, twins down there, right here. In a previous part of the video I said this 90K capacitor was defective. It is not. It is actually correct. The uh, measurement is incorrect, or the measurer, I should say. So that uh, capacitor resistor was good. Um, so if you're doing this project and you measure that, uh, make sure you measure it out of the circuit because there's actually a second path to ground and that's what was fouling me up. And then on the bottom side here, you can see we have all the new capacitors. This one uh, was this big guy here, and you can't get a 2 microfarad capacitor, um, so I bought uh, two 1 farads to get me up to the uh, 2 farad needed. And then, of course, you can see that, and then the proper strain relief, and... Uh, I put a three-prong plug on this. The old cord was kind of nasty anyway. So now we've got a ground. So I put a lug on that and that's now attached to ground. So that's that's the meat of her. Um, I'm going to set up again here and I'll show you what uh, it looks like when it's working. Okay, here's uh, one of the capacitors that came out of it. And it's equivalent. So these are both, this is a 600 volt capacitor, this um, one is a 630 volt capacitor. So I'm going to show you what it looks like and then uh, um, as kind of a sneak preview here, you can see that I've got my microamp uh, amp meter here and I'm going to try and show when this uh, shadow or this magic eye closes what uh, what it looks like so and what leakage looks like because I can really see it on this uh, little microamp. So first let's start with the new one. Let me just wire that in. Right now set to 25 or it will be. Alright, let's just put this off camera here. 
So it's set to 25 volts and see if you can see that. It's going to happen quick. Here we go. Did you see it? It just blinked. Yeah. So that's what a good one looks like. Uh, since it's good, I'm going to jump it all the way up to the maximum of uh, 450 volts. And uh, again, because it's good, there's not a lot to see. It takes just a little bit longer, but there is no leakage. It goes right back. The magic eye opens to where it was when it's closed. So that's what a good one looks like. Now we're going to take that out and we'll put the bad one in the circuit and so there that guy is there I'll put him off camera and we'll do the same thing only no point in going all the way up um, let's let's go to 150 so you can see it doesn't open all the way back up. That's because that capacitor is leaking. Right now it's leaking. But some might say, well, it's good enough. I would say no. And if we crank it up here to 250, um, you can see it never, it never recovers. So it's marginal at 150. It's junk at 250. If you take it down to 25, it actually passes at 25. So that's the other thing too is with these capacitor testers, leakage testers, you have to crank the voltage up because if you just put this on a low voltage, uh, you'd say that's a good capacitor, but it's not. All right, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to put the microamp microamp meter in the circuit and this requires a little bit of reconnection. So what I'm going to do here is so the power current is going to come through here. It's going to go in the positive side of the amp meter. So that's this red wire here ends up it goes through there. We'll put that off camera. And then to complete the circuit, we will come out of the amp meter, micro amp meter. How is it these things braid themselves? I mean, literally, I just set this up a second ago. Now they're all tangled. And we're just going to clip this on here like that. So so that creates the circuit. This one comes out of the microamp and goes back into the heath kit. And crank this up to 250 because this is a leaky boy. So now, with hopefully some luck, we can see that. That help or hinder? I hope it helps. If it doesn't, we'll have to come back and record this bit again. Alright, here's a better angle to see what's actually going on. You can see the magic eye and you can also see the uh, microampere meter. And he's reading on the 100 scale, which is this third scale on the bottom. And when I turn it uh, to leakage test at uh, 150 volts, you can see it'll jump up and you watch, compare what the needle is doing with what the eye is doing. Okay, here we go, contact. So as you see, that needle does not return all the way to zero. So at 150 volts, this capacitor is leaking and you can see the eye hasn't opened all the way either. So that's an indication that the capacitor is leaking and it's no good. So if we turn this up to 250 volts, as 
you recall that's where it uh, was completely leaky and I do the same test and again it opens just a titch but it looks like it's uh, leaking at a 10, 10 microamps so and if we do it all the way up here to 350 where it was a failure again and you'll see at 350 volts it's leaking at 20 uh, microamps and the magic eye isn't opening and if we do it at 450 just for good measure when we turn it on nearly pegs the meter not quite and it's leaking at 30 amperes, microamps. So you can see that uh, the more juice you put on here, the more leakage comes through this uh, capacitor. So uh, that's it. Um, it's all done. I'm now going to put it to work on the Blaupunk. Uh, just for grins, I'm going to run this capacitor through. This is rated at 385 volts, so we'll take it down to 350. Let's just see what this looks like real quick, because the purpose was... Actually, I tested this um, on my... Uh, using this microamp, and uh, it passed. But I only had a 64 volt source. And this one's a 385 volt capacitor. So there we go. That's come on, focus. You can do it. Yeah, no, it's going to play all sorts of games with focus. Anyway, that's what it looks like. Let's see what that looks like when we take it to. It's on 350, and. This guy's not in the circuit. We're just going to watch the magic eye. Failure. But if you test it down here, it fails there too. Oh, no, see, there we go. See, it leaks and then it's okay. It leaks a lot and then it slowly opens up. But that's at uh, 25 volts. So anyway, bottom line, uh, I feel... A little vindicated that the Blaupunk is bad, but now I really know it because it's going to be a lot of work to replace those and I didn't want to spend a lot of energy doing something that doesn't need to be done. So like this video, subscribe to this video, please, and share if uh, you have social media. And until we get started on the Blaupunk, y'all have a good day.